We are hearing from those who helped save a man's life after Saturday's plant implosion, including a dispatcher who has made headlines before. Thanks for choosing 23 ABC News at 11. I'm Jackie Parks. And I'm Amanda Gomez. 23 ABC's Crystal Figueroa spoke to the men and the woman who were there for Jerry Wood seconds after the implosion sent shrapnel flying across the street and nearly severing his legs. Crystal. Jackie, Amanda, if it weren't for those critical moments when first responders jumped into action, Jerry Wood could have very possibly have lost both of his legs in the PG&E implosion disaster on site. Tonight, we are getting more insight into that morning when emergency crews were only supposed to be on standby and ended up with an emergency on their hands. Kind of chaotic. Um, you got people, you know, running around and screaming, of course, you know, it's... Um, the dust kind of made it a little bit of a unique situation too. And nobody seemed to know that people were pointing in different directions because there was more than one person that was injured. Kern County Fire Captain Tom Allison and Captain Wayne Griffith recall the Saturday morning when the PG&E implosion went horribly wrong. So we basically just jumped in, assisted with controlling of the bleeding, um, splinting and wrapping the patient's legs. When Griffith found Jerry Wood, an engineer and a BPD officer were already treating him. But help for Wood first started with a call to 911. Okay, is anybody injured? My husband's legs have been blown off. Okay. By now, you may have heard the frightening 911 call, but you might never recognize the hero behind the voice if you saw her on the street. Okay, stay calm, okay? I've got help on the way, okay? It's my job to hold their hand for that short little time from the minute they get help until somebody else gets there, and that's my portion of the job. Tracy Halverson had just walked into work that Saturday morning when she picked up the call. Yes, not what I was expecting to start my morning with. Halverson says she was just doing her job, but she was able to take control of the situation over the phone. Or I can't put pressure on that person, but I can be there with her and let her know somebody's coming and and support them. That's part of my job. And this isn't the first time her help has made headlines. As a human being, I don't, you know, is there anybody that's, where, yeah. that's willing to help this lady and not let her die? Um, not at this time. No, no. They, won't, they won't touch her at all. Halverson was on the other end of the line when an employee at Glenwood Gardens called to report that an elderly person needed help. We're going to let this lady die? Well, that's why we're calling 911. I'm we can't sorry. wait. Each call is it's just as important to the little old lady that's sitting there and had chest pains all night long as scared as, as the big calls that you see on the news. They're each equally important to that person. So at the end of the day, if I know that I've gone home and I've done some good things, that's a good day. While she may never see the people she helps or even find out what happens to them after they hang up, she knows the power of her words go a long way. You may have heard my voice on the on the radio or on the TV, but we all do exactly the same job, and you've got a lot of us here that are working hard for your family. Tonight we are learning that Wood underwent surgery to try and save both of his legs in San Francisco. The Californian is reporting that the family has hired an attorney, but we still don't know the outcome of that surgery. In studio, I'm Crystal Figueroa, 23ABC.